Welcome to section 2.6. We're going to talk about two parts that are pretty much in all cells. The cytoplasm, all cells will have this, and the cytoskeleton. Uh, pretty much all the cells we've looked at have this. Uh, you'll see this used to be something that people thought was more of a eukaryotic cell thing, but as we've looked at prokaryotes more closely, we found that they do have cytoskeletal elements as well. So both of these are going to be pretty universal things found in cells. So as we look first at cytoplasm, we've kind of already discussed that cytoplasm is just going to be everything inside of the plasma membrane, with one exception. If you're a eukaryote, we do consider the nucleus to be separate. But everything else, and if you're a prokaryote, everything there is, uh, is going to be considered part of the cytoplasm. Now if you only include the watery stuff, you know, there's like this kind of watery, viscous type fluid that's in there. Uh, if you only include this watery type part, that's called the cytosol. So we've brought this up before, but make sure you're comfortable with it. And the cytoplasm has more purpose than just sitting there and kind of like looking pretty or something. Uh, we do have where the cytoplasm serves functions for us. So one of the first things is it allows us to suspend our organelles. And so it allows for our organelles to kind of have a place where they can kind of float. And in many cases, when we get to the cytoskeleton, you'll see we can even anchor them as they float so that they stay in one place or in some cases we'll have where organelles just kind of float freely and in certain cells you can actually even see them move because the cytoplasm can also kind of shift around as well just like water can flow you'll see some cells will actually have their their cytoplasm shift around and it's kind of cool where sometimes you can see uh, a particular organelle kind of cruising and so they can suspend the organelles they'll be vital in terms of cell shape just because if you want to have a specific shape you have to have something pushing against your cell membrane so a cell membrane is not rigid itself. So if you want to have a round cell, you have to have stuff inside the cell pushing on the cell membrane to keep it round. If you want to have a cell that is more cylindrical, same idea. And so the cytoplasm has this fluid that's pushing, so it's applying a physical force, pushing out onto that cell membrane, which allows for the cell to then have a specific shape. Uh, the particular spots that you might make it push more can help it distort itself a little bit. So in some cases there are organisms like amoebas, which are single-celled guys, and they move by what's called pseudopodia, where they kind of take their cytoplasm and throw it towards one part of the cell, and they get like these little extensions called pseudopods, or fake feet, uh, that move forward because they're kind of throwing around their cytoplasm. They can then use those to kind of pull themselves forward. So it will be used for shape and in some cases changing the cell shape can be a vital function for other stuff like movement or eating if you wrap your stuff around like wrap your cell around something to ingest it uh, that would be something where shape also has a bigger function it's not just about looks uh, it's actually in this case about feeding and then we're gonna have a lot of enzymes that are floating around in our cytoplasm so when we talk about cytoplasm we're gonna be talking about where a lot of our chemical reactions occur so when we talk about our, uh, the metabolism in general, like cell respiration, when we talk about photosynthesis, uh, some of these will occur in, organ in specific organelles, especially in eukaryotes, but parts of these typically will occur in the cytoplasm, and if you're a prokaryote, just about all of this will occur in the cytoplasm. That's the norm. And so just be aware that there's a lot of these biochemical reactions that are going on, and they're specifically going on in the cytosol uh, or in the cytoplasm. Because remember, organelles too are included in the cytoplasm. So even if it happens in an organelle, it still counts. Okay, the next bit we have before we can wrap up this section is the cytoskeleton. Now with the cytoskeleton, this is going to be the framework. It's going to be the scaffolding. It's going to be the skeleton inside of the cell. And the main thing you should know is it's going to be made entirely of protein. So I like to think of this where you've got like the Eiffel Tower or when they put up like uh, buildings, tall buildings, when they put up all the metal girders so it looks like it's just this metal skeleton that's there first before they put in the walls and the windows and all the stuff to make it look like a full building. And so for me, as I look at it, that's always what comes to my mind. And that's kind of what cells have is they have these proteins that crisscross all around the cell, all through the cell. And those allow for things to attach to stuff. They allow for things to move along them. They allow the cell overall to move because you can change the size of those and kind of tug the cell in different ways. They allow for us to go through cell division because they can actually tug and pinch apart the cell. Uh, they're a vital thing in shape as well because we talked about the cytoplasm pushes, but you can also 
increase the length of these particular little like protein rods and by doing so you can push on the cell membrane to change its shape to make it kind of elongate or to make it shrink in one direction by pulling on it. So these cytoskeletal elements will actually have a huge amount of things that go on with them because they can help us locate things in particular places, the cell itself as a whole can move, they can just rearrange the cell, uh, so it's going to have a whole bunch of different functions even though we don't normally give it that much credit because it's just kind of there. You know, it's like you don't usually talk about your car, not your road. Because the road's there, it does make your car useful. I mean, without the road, you're in major trouble if you're trying to drive most cars that aren't four-wheel drive. But we don't usually give it a whole lot of credit. We tend to take it for granted. And the cytoskeleton is one of those things that tends to get taken for granted that we just assume that cells have this structure, have this ability to anchor things if they want to, have this ability to direct movement within the cell or make the cell itself move in specific ways uh, as a whole, we just take that for granted. But keep in mind the cytoskeleton is what's allowing for all of that. And then the last bit here is just going through some of the parts of the cytoskeleton. There's three main types of protein fibers, we'll say, that make up the cytoskeleton. So it's kind of like imagining that you're trying to build a house and you have three different types of wood pieces. So maybe you've got two by fours and two by tens and pick something else, you know, molding pieces, I guess, whatever. But you've got three different types of pieces you can use. So you just pick the, the necessary piece and arrange them so you can get the job done. So some tasks might require if you're putting a floor in that they're the bigger pieces. Sometimes if it's a wall, it might be like the skinnier pieces. Or maybe you're talking about using wide, thin pieces where you're talking about like drywall. But you can do a lot of stuff if you just have a couple different pieces in general is what happens. And so the pieces we have is we have microtubules. And these guys are going to be hollow tubes made of a protein called tubulin. And so these hollow tubes, they look cylindrical, but obviously very, very skinny. Uh, but these guys are, are made, and they're used during cell division, they're used just in our cells normally to run stuff from one place to another. I'm not going to quiz you on kind of exactly what they do. I just want you to realize there's three different pieces that we're using, and they're all made of different proteins. So this one's going to be like a hollow tube. Uh, microfilaments are smaller, so they just tend to be like a thinner, more solid tube. Uh, or completely solid, really, if we're being honest. Uh, but microfilaments are going to be the smaller guys, and these are made of actin, but they'll also be these long pieces. And then keratin, these guys are more like a binding type thing. Uh, they're intermediate filaments. This is the stuff that's in our fingernails. This is the stuff in our skin. This is the stuff in our hair. Uh, so these filaments are kind of in between, if you didn't figure that out, from intermediate. So these are kind of in between size between these two. And so these three things together, and you can see these are some pictures that are highlighting in a cell, these cytoskeletal elements. So you can see how they're kind of all over the flipping place. You know, you've got all these structures. Now that is the nucleus. You can kind of ignore the blue. But outside of the nucleus, you can see these run all over the place. Now they're very thin, so it's not like they take up a bunch of space, but they're, they're throughout the cell. So the cell has lots of these. It's not like there's just a couple of them crisscrossing uh, for us to use. And so these three fibers will be all over the cell to allow us to do all those things we talked about, to anchor things, to move things, to give the cell shape. That'll be because of these three specific guys, each of which has their own specific protein they're made of, which gives them slightly different characteristics. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. That wraps up 2.6, and I'll see you guys later.